Last season we got a lot of questions on our DIY lawn care video. The most frequently asked question was, how do we calibrate our sprayer? Well, that can be sort of daunting. So in this video, we're gonna show you a very straightforward and simple approach to do that calibration. Stay tuned. Now this is rated as an 84 inch sprayer, but this is 84 inches I've got right here on the ground. And the sprayer is clearly covering a wider strip than that. So I think we're gonna see if we can just rate it a little bit wider. Maybe along about there. And that would be 10 feet. So if we rate it at 10 feet wide, one thing is true, the math will be easier. So the next step of the process is to measure how much distance we have to travel to cover 1,000 square feet with our sprayer. Since we measured a 10 foot width, it's 100 feet. So basically it's 1,000 square feet divided by your sprayer width. Look at that, there's the start line. Is that big enough? I don't think I really even needed that. I had this tree here, that's what I was yeah, going Yeah, but I wanted to make sure we were right on. You know, one thing I noticed, Christy, is that for this line, yeah. This is one place that orange is definitely better than green. Yeah, because green, I'm not sure you would see it. Yep. So you're going to go off 100 feet, and then you're going to make another orange line like this. Yep. Okay. It's the first time you've ran in a while. I think we're getting way too formal here. I like the science part of it. Come on. The next step of the process is to see how long it takes to go that 100 foot distance. So we're going to do that four times for a total of 4,000 square feet we're going to cover. Remember that number, it'll be relevant later. Obviously, little Johnny doesn't have a speedometer, but I don't really think it matters either. So what I've decided to do is go about 2,000 RPMs in low range with the foot pedal all the way down. So that way I can at least have a repeatable speed. Now for this next step, we're actually going to capture water from the sprayer for the length of time it took us to make those four trips. So this will be the amount of water that it takes to spray 4,000 square feet. We just want to make sure those buckets catch all the water. This is not exact, folks. Well, Christy's right. It's not really exact, but it's close enough for what we're doing here. We measured all this water and we got 1.44 gallons total. That is 0.36 gallons per thousand square feet. So now you estimate the total amount of yard you have, in our case about 14,000 square feet. You divide that by a thousand, then you multiply that by the gallons per thousand square foot that we calculated earlier. For our yard, just a little over five gallons should cover it. Whew, that was a lot of calculations. Go to our blog post on our website and you can see this in more detail and study it at your leisure. As you can see, Christy's already measuring chemical. She found the application rate here in the label. As you can see, it's 0.4 ounces per thousand square feet or 5.6 ounces for our 14,000 square feet. So we're going to pre-mix it right here. That way we can get those granules mixed in. This looks like mud. Well, not mud, but almost like mustard. John Deere yellow. at the bottom. Well, here, we'll put some more water in. I probably yeah. could use a little more anyway. Just put a little in and shake, shake, shake. At least Johnny has lights. My brother said he was spraying today on the farm, so I wanted to try to, you know, keep up. I just want you to get rid of the dandelions. This calibration should be accurate if you have a really large yard with no obstacles. However, for most residential yards like ours that have lots of buildings and lots of trees and stuff, it's very difficult to keep them overlapping, and it's also difficult to accurately estimate your total amount of yard. So keep track of how much water you use on your first application. Then you'll use that as your total water amount going forward. Consider applying less chemical than what the label recommends. This should ensure that if your calibration is inaccurate, you won't end up with over-application. With these approaches, you should get more accurate with each 
subsequent application. This video has attempted to show you one way to calibrate your sprayer. If you already do your own chemical application, how do you calibrate your sprayer? We'd love to hear your ideas and experiences in the comments section below. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.